The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So you don't have to worry about the numbers. God is not so much about numbers as he is about the quality of the people that have gathered. Jesus oftentimes took James, Peter, and John when he had very important um, events. He didn't dwell on numbers. So uh, don't let the numbers discourage you at all. Be encouraged in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I wonder if you sing this one here. Just any day now. Just any day now. My Lord is coming. He'll be returning for you and me. Oh, I've been watching and I've been waiting. Just say. So get into the spirit of it. Amen. Amen. So get into the spirit of the song. Just any day now, some of you young people that are not yet married now are praying for wives. Yesterday, there was a confession being made. I think Brashem or somebody was. Um, and uh, some of you are not yet married and you are longing to see your husband or wife and then uh, somehow you get to, to hear of a lady and you be communicating with her and probably coming from outside and then you are longing to see that person. And uh, that kind of longing in your heart, is that kind of longing in your heart to see the Lord? Is that how it is? So let's sing it now. Just any day now.
myself and feel free. Amen. Hallelujah. That will be the greatest news flash in history. When the Lord our God darkens the eastern sky and descends and is bright ready to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, what a great day that will be. Is that the desire of your heart to meet your Lord that glorious day? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for all the good things you do for us. We bless your holy name, O oh gracious Lord, how you have preserved the people for your glory. Lord, you showed us up in these last days, the most dangerous of all the ages that have ever been on earth. The worst time, the darkest hour, and yet, it is at this time that you have invaded Satan's Eden to get a bride unto your name. Oh, how we thank you, Lord. You want to tell the devil that you are always superior. And no matter what he does, you are able to undo everything that he does. Amen. You came to destroy the works of the devil. And you cried on Calvary Street, it is finished. Amen. You have totally destroyed the works of the devil. You have destroyed the power of death, and you are the resurrection and the life. We give you praise this hour. Oh, we convert your presence. Lord, we convert your presence, that you come amongst us and do for us what we did not even expect. Lord, we are trusting your grace. Help us today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Shall we please take our seats? It's been a wonderful privilege to be among God's children this morning again. Uh, I left Ghana, Kumasi, precisely in the center of uh, Ghana, um, uh, nearly one month ago. And uh, we first came through England uh, for a uh, wedding. And there was, uh, there's a family there that I've known for a long time. And they, their daughter was married. So they wanted us to be part of it. So I came with my wife. And then um, the, just when we left the country, five people died four in the church and one directly my, my brother, uh, biological brother. Uh, my mother had 10 children. I'm the last one. And uh, all of them have died, including my dad in 67, my mom in 2008. And I had twin brothers and all kinds of, and all of them have died right from the top down, down, down. The last three of us, that were left. And just before I came over, the one after whom I come directly also died. So they are waiting for me to go back uh, for the funeral because if I have to be there before they can do anything. Therefore, it's changed my program and everything that uh, I plan to do has been altered. So I uh, it's so much hard on me. Four people from our congregation have died, <laughs> and uh, it's just it's just just too much for a congregation, and too much for a pastor. So I covet your prayers. It's not an easy road, and when things like this happen, you want to think deeply: Have these people that died were they prepared to meet the Lord? Did I minister so much to them in a way that their hearts were ready to meet the Lord? Or I'm guilty of their blood? It can be both. Either I've done it, but they did not walk in the fullness of the light, or I failed to do my duty towards them as a servant of the living God. This pulpit here is not a place for games. This is not a place even to run businesses. No, sir. Amen. 
We do not enter the ministry for what we will gain from it. But what we are prepared to, to give, to surrender unto the Lord, so that the Lord can use us. I was reading, uh, listening to God's prophet, and uh, he was saying that he wants to remain under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, so that if God chooses to use him to bless his children, he will find him ready. Did you hear it? He wants to condition himself under the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that if God needs him to use him to bless his children, he will be found ready. Amen. To me, that's how God's children, God's servants, should condition themselves. Amen. I realize that over the years of ministry and meeting with all kinds of people and churches and people, I realize that oftentimes we miss God's plan and God's purpose. Can we look at the church of the living God through the eyes of God's prophet? From the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament, we find out that before God ever committed a people to any servant, before Jehovah God ever committed his people, blood-bought people, to any servant of his, he gave that servant a vision of what he wants done. And then he commissions him, go down there and do it likewise. An example is in Exodus chapter 25. Jehovah God showed Moses on Mount Sinai. He said, look at it. Go down there and build the same pattern down on earth. And what shows that Moses did it exactly? Moses did it exactly, and the evidence is the fact that God's glory entered into that Amen. tabernacle. Amen. That was the proof, that was the evidence that Moses built it according to that divine uh, prescription. Amen. That was when Jehovah was pleased to enter that tabernacle in the wilderness. Amen. So the ministers could not enter it. That's right. Amen. David had it in his heart to build God a tabernacle. That's right. Amen? Amen? And God gave him the pattern. That's right. But God will not permit David to build that tabernacle right. by his son, Amen. Solomon. So when Solomon had completed the temple, Second Chronicles chapter 5, and all the singers, the Levites, the trumpeters, they took their positions like you have done this morning beautifully. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then the glory of God came into that temple Amen. and filled that temple, Amen. showing that it was built according to divine specifications. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord Jesus, the master builder, came to construct a church. Amen. He came to build a church. Amen. And what shows that he, that he built it right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John produced the book of Acts. That's right. Amen. Amen. And when the, they were all with one accord, yes. when the day of Pentecost was fully come, That's right. they were all with one accord in one place. Amen. And to show that that body was constructed right, Amen. the fullness of the glory of God came into that temple. Amen. And he produced the book of Acts. Amen. And thus saith the Lord, Amen. if that tree yes, shoots forth another branch, uh -huh. it's going to produce another Amen. church of the living God, Amen. produce another book of Acts. Amen. So we have to see the bigger vision. Yes, we have to see the bigger picture. I see people struggling and struggling and doing this and doing that. This morning, I want to dwell on the thought of God's burden. Hallelujah. I want to talk about God's house. Amen. The church of the living God has all kinds of scriptural identifications. Jehovah God identifies his church as a burden. He identifies his church as the bright tree. Amen. Amen. He even identifies his church as a, a farm. Yeah. Yeah. 
a husbandry, and he identifies his church as his sheep. Amen. 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 So, as we look at these identifications, we want to come to uh, uh, these thoughts. We have to understand that if we are living in the closing days of time, yes, yes. and the capstone is coming over the pyramid, right. we have to realize and know what kind of church that capstone is coming to cap off. Right. What kind of a church is he coming to cap off? Amen. That's why we want to dwell on this short moment that the Lord will lead us. Amen. So pray for me. Amen. First, we want to stand on our feet, and then we will take Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29. God's church, God's building, God's house, God's farm, the bride tree, the pyramid church. All these are titles of the same body of people called the body of Christ. Amen. The church of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, bless your word to our hearts as we enjoy studying it together in your name. Amen. Amen. So Mark chapter 4 verse 26 to 29. Mark chapter 4. Verse 26 to verse 29. I like to read this Bible. I like to study it in the light of the message of the hour. People are, are, are getting discouraged. They are, are, are forsaking the message of the hour. And the prophet of God said, uh, quoting, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. They have hewn unto themselves broken cisterns. And if you forsake living waters, what do you have but magos? So, Mark 4, 26 to 29. Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring, and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself, first the blade, Amen. Amen. Then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. Amen. So you can see the progression. That's right. Amen. First, the blade. And then, the ear of the corn. That's the cob, actually. The cob on which the grains come. And then, the grains. And after that, what, the, what happens? But when the fruit, amen, amen, the farmer is not looking for ears and blades and things like that. He's looking for what he planted. He's looking for what he put in the ground. The original seed. He's looking for its reproduction at the end of the process. Then, then cometh, what does he say? When the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come. Amen. So you see the timing of the harvest is not when the process is still in continuity, but when the, the, the original seed is reproduced, Amen. then it's harvest time. Amen. You cannot have a harvest time sermon preached until the fruit age. Hallelujah. Until the original is brought back again. Amen. Then it's ready for harvesting. Amen. It has to, to, 
to lay in the sand, no more growth, but it's hardening. No more growth. There is a cessation of growth, but the seed has to lay in the sunshine to know the greenness and all the foolishness is out. Then it is capable of reproducing the entire plant, the life of the entire cereal. Amen? Amen. Comes into the seed only. You might, you might sow the uh, plant, the, 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 the roots. It can't reproduce anything. You might even take the cob and, pl and plant it or sow it. Nothing can come out of it. All the life of the entire plant comes into the seed. And that seed can reproduce the entire plant. So the seed contains all what God did in all the ages. That is where the bride of Jesus Christ is supposed to be. We have to have everything that Jehovah God produced in every age in the past. Amen. Then, this church of the living God ought to be a powerhouse. Amen. Amen. This church of the living God ought to be the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. This church of the living God, we'll be reading some things today, right? Amen. We want to read, so keep that scripture in your mind. We also want to read 1 Kings chapter 6, talking about Solomon's temple. 1 Kings chapter 6. Solomon's temple. Prophet said, if you study the word of the Lord in types and shadows, you never go wrong. He says, I'm a typologist. I like to take the shadow and then understand the substance. So, Solomon's temple. Solomon begins to build the temple. First Kings chapter 6, verse 7 says, And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone made ready before it was brought thither. So that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. So the building materials were made ready before they came to the site. Amen. And each material, hallelujah, was designed to fit into the general, the big picture. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Each material was not a duplicate of another. Each material was so important, it has its own special place in that burden. So is the church of the living God and individual members thereof. Amen. You are so special, you are so unique, nobody can be like you. When you are gone, nobody will ever be like you. Amen. Nobody has ever been on earth like you. Amen. You are so special. Tell yourself, I'm so special. I'm so special. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The church of the living God. Amen. The board in the house of the living God. Now we want to turn to the New Testament and read one or two other places. Uh, first... Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Timothy 3, 15. Paul speaking. But if I tarry, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. Apparently, some people don't know how to behave themselves in the house of the living God. So Paul is writing to tell them 
that ye might know how to behave yourself in the what? The house, of house of the living God, which is the church of the living God. Amen. The house is also the church. Amen. The pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. So this church is the house of the living God, the pillar and ground of Amen. the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Also, we want to turn to, uh, this, this was uh, 1 Timothy 3. We want to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians 3, reading from verse 9. We must understand that the message of the hour can never be contrary to the Bible. This is the problem people have. They do not even know and believe that William Branham did not bring another Bible. Right. No. This is the written word, but his ministry was to reveal the no. hidden truths That's in right. the written Amen. word. Amen. 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 So, this is a true saying. First Timothy three. Oh, yeah, cut it. No, sometimes you are so much money with something in your heart. First Corinthians three. Yeah, and verse nine. For we are laborers together with God. Can you imagine that you are, you are working together with God? Laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. They do animal husbandry, farming. You are God's farm. Ye are God's building. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Amen. People have drawn attention to the, the initials wise, W, M, master, B, builder. Which are the same initials of our prophet. Paul saying I'm a wise master builder. W M B William Marion Branham a wise master builder poses as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation foundation of what God's house Amen. just as it was done in the Old Testament now the reality is here it, the, the Old Testament uh, was just a type, a shadow. But the substance, the real one, is here. Amen. And if the shadow could produce so much power, if the blood of bulls and of goats, hallelujah, Amen. could produce so much power among God's children, how about the reality of the blood of God himself by the people? Oh, my goodness. Help us, Lord. So 1 Corinthians 3, I'm still reading. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth upon it. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's way shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So this is the fire trial now going on in the world today. People's claims, they claim they believe the message, but they get to a point, and when the fire comes, it burns up everything. They didn't believe anything in the beginning. They lose everything. Praise the Lord. 
The wisdom of this world is foolishness. You can read the rest of the story, but this is the portion talking about God's building, talking about God's house, the foundation, and the capstone. The Lord bless you as you take your seats. God's church, God's house, God's building, tree, the bright tree, the tree that God himself has planted. Talking about the church of the living God like a grain of mustard seed. Seed that has been sown in the ground, cereal. First, we all know a little bit of biology. You sow that seed at the endoderm or whatever. It gets uh, corrupted, but the, 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 there has to be that germ of life in the seed. If you sow any seed without a germ of life called the embryo in it, it will never germinate. So you sow that seed, if the germ of life is in it, it the endoderm, that's that portion around the embryo, will get rotten to feed that embryo. And then it will shoot, for, it will shoot forth blaze, leaves. And then it will continue and it will produce the tassel. Amen. And out of the tassel, it will produce the cob, what they call the ear. Amen. And then the grains will come and settle on the cobs or the ear. Amen. And if you might think you have got, but the prophet preached is not here with the shark. The shark will be the first to come. Follow it closely and it will explain all these things that are going on because God has sent this message to give us understanding amen. of events as they happen That's right, each day. He, the titles of the message themselves are part of the revelation. Yeah, yeah. Modern events made clear by prophecy. Amen. The only way you can understand what is going on in uh, in Ukraine, with the Russians, with this and that, and you can only interpret those things by prophecy. Amen. What has the Bible through the mouth of God's prophet declared to happen in our day? The only way you can explain those things, the only way you see naked women in the streets and all this hatred for life, the anti-life approach is all Modern events made clear by prophecy. The only way you can understand why women want to make themselves fair, artificial beauty on the outside, the only way you can understand it is to know that as it was in the days of Noah, said the Lord Jesus, Amen. so shall it be. So you go to Genesis chapter 6 and you see as it was. Right. How was it? They made themselves fair. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took unto them women. So you can see that all this flashing red light of his coming he preached. All these things is targeting the sons of God. The children of the most high God. All these things going on out there is not targeting serpent seed. They are already in the devil's grips. But he's targeting you, sons and daughters of the most high God, that we will lose our grounds. That is what the devil is targeting. So you can understand what is going on by prophecy. What the Bible has already said. That is the only thing that will help you to understand the spirit of this age. is the spirit of rebellion. And it's preparing the people for God's judgment. Amen. Amen. At the same time that the devil is preparing his people for judgment, God Almighty is also sending a message to prepare his people for the rapture. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just as these others, the terrorists have, have come to a place where they are going to be bound for burning, bound for burning, the bride of Jesus Christ is also being united by the word of the Lord for the rapture. Amen. They are working power. This one is parallel to that. That's what is going on today. Amen. Amen. So Christianity has traveled. Traveled from the first, the, the, the travel from the book of Acts. Christianity has traveled from that day of Pentecost when the church of the living God was established. Jesus turning to his disciples and asking them, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter gives the right answer. That's right. And then he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen. Upon the rock of revelation of those who know who Jesus Christ is. Amen. And it's so important. That's why the whole book of Revelation is dedicated to the revealing of who Jesus Christ is. Amen. The book of Revelation, the central theme is the unveiling of God. Amen. The very first line, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which means that previously he was hidden, but now he is being unveiled. And he introduces himself. This time, not somebody saying he is. But he says, I am. Amen. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the Amen. beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Amen. The one who was, who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. So he's revealing himself to his children. Amen. Why is it important that we know who he is? John chapter 8, he says that except you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So Jesus is saying that if you don't believe that he is the father, you will die in your sins. That is why the fundamental revelation, the fundamental mystery, the first and foremost, most important mystery is to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Amen. The people that know their God, they shall do exploits. Amen. The people that know their God, church of the living God, God's message has not come to us just to make us conform to American standards of living or to conform to Ghanaian way or West African way of living. No, God has sent a message to call us to conform to the image of Christ Jesus, the living word, so that we will be the powerhouse of that word of the living God. The message, the gospel is a supernatural gospel. Amen. I'm standing here today before you, as I said the other time, because of the supernatural power of the supernatural gospel. Amen. How can a man be still alive when blood is oozing into your brain? My whole brain was filled up with blood. And I was supposed to be paralyzed, supposed to be dead by now. You can come and feel the, 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 they made what they call bear holes. They drill holes through my cranium, the skull. And the pressure that had been built up was let off. Prophet pre letting off the pressure. So much pressure had built up in my head till the head was swimming at a rate that you can't even calculate with any machine. And it was like, man, that was it. By the prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. Power of the living God. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Came on the scene. Amen. And the doctors would come and say, raise your leg. Raise your foot. They were expecting that with that kind of pressure and with so much blood, I should lose my... <laughs> I shouldn't be able to move any part of my limbs. I shouldn't be able to talk normal. But here am I. Amen. Woo! 
How can you tell me that Jesus Christ is not the same yesterday, today, and forever? It is my desire this morning that the living God will reveal himself to every individual so much so that nobody can explain it away from you. When the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he made sure that every one of his predestinated children knew that he was risen from the dead. Why was that important? Because he, there were people in that society that would not believe the resurrection. Oh, yeah. right. But the resurrection was not meant for them. No, Whatever Jesus has sent his servants throughout all ages to do is not for unbelievers. Right. It is for the believer. Yeah. So if they are saying they don't believe it anymore, it's not for them. <laughs> but it's for you and I. Amen. 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 That's why the disciples, when Jesus said, will you also go? <laughs> he said, except you eat my, my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Right. They said, this is a hard saying. Who can believe it? <laughs> if you can believe it, say, I can believe it and go. But there were people who couldn't believe it, and yet they had nowhere else to go. Why? Because they were part of that message. They were so much part of that message, you only have to kill the message to kill them. God wants you to be so much part of this end time message that the only way to stop you from believing it is to kill you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we want to see God's body, God's church, how that, the vision that he had for his church, the kind of church he set up, That's right. and what he had in mind before he set that church up. Yeah. First Corinthians chapters 12 to 14, chapter 12 is telling about one body, but many members. I want you to look at the broad picture, the big picture. Right. Too many people think that our little groups, like our church, your church, somebody else's church, and that is what God calls his church. No. No, 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 no. No matter how well organized, no matter how much he is with us here, that is not the full picture. That is just a little part of the big picture. That's right. Can you see that? Amen. Okay. So what is the big picture? All what God was, let's say Christ is revealed. Amen. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Amen. The prophet of God says all what God was, he poured into Christ. So the Lord Jesus Christ, Colossians 1 and verse 19, was the fullness of the Godhead Amen. bodily. Amen. All what God was, was represented in that body. Amen. You, can, you couldn't find God anywhere else outside of that one body called the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All what God, the invisible God was, became visible in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. Now, that body, the Lord Jesus Christ, was sacrificed on Calvary's tree because hidden in that body like it was in Adam was his bride. Amen. His bride was predestinated together with him. She is as old as him Amen. in the spirit. Amen. But in order for that bright body to become material, he had to be crucified. Amen. Just as Adam had to be put to a deep sleep. Amen. And his side, out of his side, God pulled one rib and brought the female Amen. and formed that into a separate entity. Amen. And brought her to him. Amen. He has sealed up that open wound. Uh -huh. And then when he was finished with her, God brought her 
to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So she and him were so much one till Adam could look at her. Hands, feet, every way. She was him standing right before him. Amen. That is how the two shall be one flesh. They have the same nature. They could blend into a homogeneous mixture because they have the same content. Hallelujah. They have the same material. They have the same, they came from the same source. She is as eternal as he. She is a reflection of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why the bride of Christ cannot be a denomination. That's right. Amen. For the head is the word. That's right. And if the head is the word, the body cannot be some kind of a no, concrete sir. mixture. No, if the head is that flexible, how can the body be some concrete stone? He uh -huh. can't move it. No, so that body and the head must be of the same nature Amen. in order to dovetail. Amen. The reason I had us to read Luke, uh, Luke 4, Mark 4, 26 to 29, talking about the harvest time, the fruit at the end, uh -huh. the same as the seed in the beginning. Uh -huh. The fruit at the end uh -huh. was the same as the seed at the beginning. Amen. That's where the prophet of God picked it up and he preached spoken word is the original seed. Amen. Amen. Spoken word Amen. is the original Amen. seed. Amen. So the end product uh -huh. is the same as what went into the ground. Amen. So the farmer will wait patiently until the original seed is reproduced. Amen. And then Amen. Amen. And then is the harvest time. So what season are we living in? And what is Jehovah God expecting from this temple that he calls his house? Ephesians chapter 2. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. From verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building, all the building, the church, the bride. Amen. 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 All the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple. In the Lord. Amen. So this building that he's constructed is being constructed so that it will be a... a when, we, when you started the, the song, what, song service, you started with, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. So that is the idea. Framed together, in whom ye also are built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. Habitation of God through the Spirit. So, in the Old Testament, God dwelt in a sanctuary. Oh, yes. Moses constructed a sanctuary. Right. Then he moved into a permanent building called the temple. Amen. His glory came. Amen. Then he moved from... <coughs> Buildings made with human hands. He says, a body has thou prepared me. 
So there was this body, virgin born body, sinless body, in which the fullness of God came and indwelt. And according to John 1 and verse 16, John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible says, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. And of his fullness have all we received. So you see, he's a full tank. And then there is a tap, and we are all drawing from that fullness. So you have so much of it, and that one has so much of it, and that one and his entire bright body become now the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That is where Paul, in Ephesians chapter 1, he was praying for the Ephesians. You see, Abraham said, the Corinthians are like the Pentecostals of today and the Charismatics. All what they know about is gifts, 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 gifts. But you remember in the days of Abraham, he gave his inheritance to Isaac, yeah. but gave, gave gifts mm -hmm. to the concubine children. Yeah. Yeah. Gifts, but the inheritance is for Isaac. God's inheritance is for his bride. Chosen before the foundation of the world. We have the inheritance. They may have gifts, but we have the inheritance. Amen. And you who has the inheritance has all. Amen. He has everything. So of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Now we, according to 1 Corinthians 12, talking about this body of Christ, many members. I don't care how long the mouth will fast and pray. It will never see. It's not meant to see. So you can fast and pray and wish and do anything. If you are not meant to see, you are never going to see. So what does the prophet of God advise? He says, wait on the Lord to know your position in the body of Christ and stay there. Man. Your position might be the little nail on your fingers. But you are as important as the nose. Amen. Because if it comes to pulling out, the eye might see a little prick in the skin. But remember, no matter how much the eye will see it, it cannot remove it. That's right. It will take those fingernails to remove it. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. If you have never been in that situation, you will never know the value of your fingernails. Yeah. You think God will put anything in that body that has no usefulness? Yeah. So everything in this body of Christ is as useful as any other part. Amen. There should be no rivalry. There should be no competition. There Amen. should be nothing. Amen. What God has called me to do and to be, nobody else can take my place. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody can take my place Amen. and nobody Amen. can take your place either. Amen. That is recognize your position in the body of Christ and keep laboring there. Amen. I was exhorting our congregation back in Kumasi and I was telling them there was this sister Moore. Brother Abraham, you know Brother Abraham, one of his closest friends, Shreveport, Indiana. Uh, uh, is it Shreveport, Louisiana, Brother Jack Moore. And Sister Moore had been fasting and praying. He said, Brother Branham, why is it that I've been fasting and praying I've never seen one vision? You know what the prophet said? He said, when you fast and pray, then the person that has been gifted to see visions will be seeing the visions. So your gift, if you function and do what you are supposed to do, it will activate the gift in somebody else. So see how the sister was wasting her time wanting to see a vision? And if you, if you corner yourself that way, 
The devil will discourage you and make you think that you are not even a child of God. Because as long as you are not able to produce that kind of thing, you will think that you are not even a Christian. And the devil will be very happy because he doesn't want us to know who we are. Amen. But this morning, God wants you to know that if you have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, if you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are so special. And you are so important to God. Hallelujah. But collectively, God's bride is not made up of people here in uh, uh, Virginia or Maryland or any land. They are individuals. One here, one there. One here, one there. And they constitute the body of Christ. And the most important thing for you this day is to make sure that 1 Corinthians 12, 13 has been fulfilled in your life. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. By one spirit... We are all baptized into that body. Amen. Hear it again. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. This original body of God that was named Jesus had the fullness of Godhead in him. And that body that was crucified that was buried, did not remain in the, in the rich man's grave, nor is it still hanging on the Roman cross. It rose again. Remember, when Christ resurrected, according to the old books, page 70 of the Christ the mystery of God revealed, the old books, Abraham said his head was, his body was identified with the head at the resurrection. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. Talk, we are talking about God's building, God's house, God's church, the body of Christ now. When he resurrected, his body was identified with him. It wasn't just the resurrection of the head. It was also the resurrection of the body. Think of it. And that body defied gravity. Gravity. And it ascended all the way back to the throne where he was before he came. So right now, he will reign. 1 Corinthians 15, he will reign until death becomes his footstool. And remember, the lowest part of the body is the feet. So the lowest person in the body of Christ has victory over death. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The, that's what the prophet of God said. If the least member in the body of Christ gets down on their knees and they pray, the foundation of hell will shake. Why? Because the lowest part of the body you know, is sitting on death. Swallowed up death in victory. Christians don't die. No, sir. Sister Peace, where are you? Oh, yeah, she was okay. Hey, Christians don't die. No, sir. We only change our dwelling places. That's right. That's right. From, from the pest house yes, sir. to the word house. Amen. Amen. From this Amen. rotten, corruptible mess. That's right into an incorruptible theophany. Amen. So what do you call that? Do you call that death? No, sir. No, sir. When some of us got visa, you were hiding away in some Nigerian village <laughs> or some Ghana village, and through some way you managed to get a visa. That day you went home. You are a bar. How you had that a bar? You know how it was. Because you were coming to rotten United States. Did, you, did your parents sit back there to call it death? No. <laughs> they were happy. Right. Oh, he's going to the land of the white man. Yeah. And he's going to bring, the, you know, our people think that all the trees here are shedding for dollar, dollar bills. 
and everything you gather around here is dollars. So when you get back home, everybody is pulling for some dollars from you. That's what they think. Mm -hmm. But we all know this is not heaven. No, sir. This place here is Bill, 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 Bill. Yes, so God sent them Bill Branham. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Body of Christ. Amen. So, for, let's all read it. Everybody, every eye here. For by one spirit are whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, have been all made to drink into one spirit. People have to come to the realization that God has got only one Holy Spirit. How many know that? And he's got only one bride. We may be so many churches, so many groups, so many factions, but in this group here, are people that have been baptized by one spirit and are part of that victorious resurrected body Amen. that are seated together with Christ in Amen. heavenly places Amen. with demons and powers of darkness subject to them Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In here are individuals that have been baptized into that glorious body. That should be our target that should be what we aspire on to. Right. Are you following me? Amen. Not just being part of any group. Whatever names we, whatever tags we bear, or labels we bear has nothing to do with it. Individually being identified with the risen body through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That should be your target. Amen. For you, you will die as an individual. Amen. And you are going alone. We may be in a group which is very important. Uh -huh. Forbid not the assembling of yourselves together is God's commandment. Amen. Especially as you see the day approaching. Uh -huh. That is God's commandment. Brother Abraham said you cannot stay on your own and stay home and say I'm playing tapes. Uh -huh. If people repent, would they tape baptize them? Oh, no, I believe in playing tapes. I play tapes every day. I have... I bought this uh, headset, and I've got a little SD card with air, all the messages on it. I just put it there, and it's on my head. Message after message, message. That's how I play. That's where I get my inspiration. But can I go and play that tape in a village where people hardly will know the difference between A and B? I can't do it. So I have to be the interpretation of the message and leave it before them and interpret it in my language to their level. Just as Jesus took the five loaves of bread and blessed it, he could have given it to the disciples, uh, the people, supernaturally. He could have just said, hey, you peace, go there, there. You feed all these people here. You feed all. It could have happened. But man is God's partner. Amen. Man is God's partner. You can that is his provided way. Amen. 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 So he blessed it and gave it to the disciples. And they broke. You can see they look at your tummy and your size and they break it according to your power of consumption. Amen. Amen. So they broke it in the, according to how people had grown, you see. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. But he did not stop thinking and he did not stop talking. But he now talked with maturity. This church of the living God ought to come to maturity. We have to come to fullness of maturity. And put away childish things. This one did me this, that one did me childishness. Childishness. Hallelujah. Partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of that pyramid bride. We are part. Now listen. I run this course and so big, but 
I'll just pick a few of them. I titled it The Capping of the Pyramid Bride. Talking of God's building. Prophet of God said, the only structure that can be likened to that city is the pyramid. But do you know that that city is also the bride? Amen. 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 Now listen. The state and condition in which he must find it as at his coming. Are you ready? Amen. We read Mark uh, 4, uh, 26 to 29, and it was talking about the harvest time. Before the, that, that farmer would set his sickle and harvest his crops, he must make sure and patiently wait until the original seed has reproduced itself in fullness. Not partly, in fullness, and is even capable of reproducing more. That is when fully ripening seed, then he will harvest them into his heavenly barn. Can you say amen? amen? So listen to this course from God's prophet. The first one, Abraham's covenant confirmed. He says, now look at today. Look what we see today and find out. What did I say about the pyramid? It will have to be honed. To be honed is to be sharpened to a razor edge. If, if somebody has a hole, no, an axe, excuse me, an axe or a cutlass, machete, they hone it on the stone, sharpen it till it becomes a razor, razor edge. So sharp. Amen. So, I say about it, it will have to be honed and so perfectly set in all the shavings and everything till that hairstone will have to fit just perfectly in. Are you following? Man. That pyramid, the capstone, before that capstone, before that, this one will be harvested to unite with the hairstone, that top there, the hairstone will have to fit just perfectly in. See, the rejected hairstone will have to be come back. So the covenant, the life that was in Christ, the life that was in Christ is in the church, the Holy Spirit. So the life in the church is what? The Holy Spirit. That was the fullness of God in spirit. God in spirit. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the fullness of God had in the body was nothing but the Holy Ghost in a body form. Praise the Lord. Now, the covenant, the life that was in Christ is in the church. Prophets didn't say it will be. Even at that time, he said it is in the church. The Holy Spirit. Jesus said, a little while and the world won't see me no more, yet ye shall see me for I. It's a personal pronoun. I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. And the works that I do, shall ye do also. Don't you see it? What is the covenant church confirmed? Is the one who has the Holy Spirit. What is the covenant church confirmed? Is the one who has the Holy Spirit. We who are dead in Christ, we take on Abraham's seed and are heirs with him according to the promise. And if you have never received the Holy Ghost yet, you have never come into the covenant of God. Amen. Did you hear that? If you have not received the Holy Ghost yet, yet you have never come into the covenant of God. Uh -huh. I will leave that one and go to the next. Abraham's covenant confirmed still. Look down here in the age of Luther. 
Luther's a justification. How many know that Martin Luther smoked a, a big pipe? And he even said that the Jews killed Jesus, and that's why Hitler used to persecute the Jews. He didn't have the revelation you and I have, but the revelation needed for that hour was justification. He had it. So don't be, don't be, uh, uh, don't be stumbled by the fact that he was a church age messenger and yet was like that. The revelation of justification by faith was the needed thing after the dark ages. After Thyatira, the saddest church age escaped once, they needed to lay the foundation again. God's building was being constructed. And the foundation, justification by faith in what Christ did for us is the foundation. The new birth experience is the foundation. So when that foundation was being laid, <clears throat> that was it. Then, so, <clears throat> look down here in the age of Luther, justification. Plenty of room. You see that if the pyramid, if you can have the pyramid uh, on the screen somewhere, we will, or I'm sure it's somewhere, we all have the pyramid, we know about it. So we can go on, you know, not to take too much of your, okay. Now, you look at it at the base, Ephesus, Paul. Over there, you see that, talking about Luther here. Uh, the, the foundation, as you go up, you see that the, the pyramid is getting narrower and narrower. Amen. The baseline, you look at the baseline, it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And by the time we get to Laodicea, where this age here is so little, yes. even though it's drawn that way, when the prophet preached one in a million, he let us understand that it's not just going to be a very big group in the end. That's why you hear so many people backsliding from the message. It will continue till the original people, the true seed of God will remain. Amen. And then the power of the most high God will overshadow them. And they will demonstrate Christ one last time. Amen. Just as prophet preached once more, Lord. They will demonstrate Christ one last time, and then they will be persecuted by, by the false church system that would have been formed into a ecumenical movement. They will try to persecute and, and get rid of that bride. They will blame us for everything happening in the world. Yesterday I was in a discussion with, uh, I don't remember, I think it was Brother Gee or Brother... And we we're talking about Christ Jesus. You watch. By the time they crucified him, everybody had, had forsaken him. Yes. Oh, yeah. And if you start reading from Luke 23 upwards, you are going to find out that they hated him so much. They treated him, they said he was Beelzebub, he was a deceiver, <coughs> he was a liar. They, 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 I, 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 and the Bible even says that they, 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 they considered him to be so wrong till they said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. They were so sure he was so wrong that they were willing for a curse to come upon them in order to get rid of him. And the body of Christ, the bride of Jesus Christ, as we go closer to the end, we are going to come under similar persecution and hatred and wickedness till if you don't know where you are standing, you will be discouraged. But the reason why you will be the target of the devil is because you are God's true child. And your life will be a rebuke to the world. You think the women of the world, they are happy that you are wearing that long dress and, and, and leaving your skin and your body the way it is? No. Uh, anytime they see you, it is like Haman and Mordecai. Yes. Uh -huh. Everybody was bowing down to Haman. That's right. But Mordecai never <laughs> bowed down. And that man, 
Even though he was, so many were bowing to him, he didn't care about the big numbers. As long as this guy is not bowing, he must make him bow. So he, pro, he, he plotted his destruction. So this is what is going to happen. The true members of this bright body are coming to a place where they'll be hated and despised and rejected and condemned and everything else. But Christ will come for her and take her away and then turn on, on, the, on the world and they will pay for their sins. Some Baba, I, I, I still have one more meeting so I don't have to rush through. If I don't get no questions, then we will... I will just continue with this. Talking about this bright uh, Luther justification, plenty of room here. Just to confess Christ meant um, you have your head chopped off in those days. When they come out of paganism to have your head, uh, you will be executed for the very witness of saying you was a Christian. That's in the days of Luther. Then what did he do? It heaps up. Now, to the minority, so it's getting narrower, coming down closer. What was the next sanctification? Then he was called a fanatic, holy roller or something. In fact, they poured water on uh, John Wesley's converse. Well, he will preach to people who, who will be who conversing and um, people will be fainting. And he preached hell down to the earth. And the people will be holding on to all kinds of things, thinking they were sinking to hell. That was how Martin, uh, John Wesley preached the gospel, the power of the resurrection. But that was all the way up to sanctification. Then he was called a fanatic, holy roller or something. That's Wesley's age. What happened next? Then come the Pentecostal. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, and still the church got smaller in the minority. And now, listen here, and now it goes on till that has to get to such a perfect place until when the headstone finally comes, it will fit so perfect, the church will be honed to a perfect condition till it fits absolutely perfect without cement. Individuals that were part of uh, the, uh, the building materials that were part of Solomon's temple were prepared fully before they came in. And they fitted into their little places, their chosen places. Abraham describes it when he says that uh, Solomon's temple, they had this weird looking stone and they, uh, they, no, this stone doesn't fit anywhere. They threw it away. But when they had finished the construction, the space that was left, the only stone that could fit into it was the rejected stone. That's right. And they brought it and it became the head of the corner. Right. Amen. So this bride of Jesus Christ, that is being rejected like our, our master. Like our master, if they rejected him, so, so will they do to the bride. If they accepted him, then would they, so will they do to us. But they did not, and they will not. So the prophet continues. It goes on till that has to get to such a perfect place, until when the hailstone finally comes, it will fit so perfect, the church will have to be such a perfect shape until when Christ comes, he fits right into it. That's right. Amen. 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 That's the way the church is going to have to be. I've jumped over. That's the way the church is going to have to be. So hold down the word holding the church until when Christ comes to take the church, the ministry, the church will, will pick right up on it and will raise Luther, Wesley, Pentecost and all, and go up with it to take the church up. Let me take this, the last. There are many others, but the picture here is this. The very character and nature of Christ. As we approach 
the headstone coming over the bride part. Amen. Amen. The ministry has to be so much like that of Christ that when he comes, they will fit perfectly together. Amen. And you, if you look at what is going on amongst us, it is a far cry from what God's picture, his vision of his bride is. Therefore, we have to work into the broader vision, the broader picture. And, and, and sometimes we worry our heads about what somebody is not doing. You do what you are supposed to do. And leave out that person because who knows? Who, no one knows who is who. Only God knows those who are his. Amen. And he says, my sheep know my voice. Amen. A stranger's voice they will not hear. That's right. People are listening to strange voices and are getting confused. It has been so. Go and read 2 Timothy chapter 2. And you are going to find out that Paul is talking about this guy. They were, even in those days, they were preaching that the resurrection was past. Yeah. And he said they were upsetting the faith of some. By preaching false doctrine. So we are supposed to have them. But the child of God ought to be so disciplined, so much on the word, so much the word, till nothing can deceive you. No wind of false doctrine can blow you off your foundation. That's what God is wanting to do with his bride in these last days. Amen. If you notice, way down at the bottom of, of it is wide. Amen? The pyramid. Then it shapes up a little more in the minority, and then a little more, and then it goes to the headstone. Amen? Amen. That is the Lutheran age, justification in the church, sanctification, then the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But as it shapes towards the top, as it shapes towards the top, it continues from Lutheran age to Wesley and to Pentecostal age. But after it leaves the Pentecostal age, the shock, it still shapes up until it has to get to such a place till all those stones are so honed till a razor blade cannot even go through. The pyramid cap is just about to be set on top at that time, the prophet pre-61 just about to be set on top. The church is being honed down and seeing its last sign. Lord, let them people wake up and realize they are looking for something way out yonder in the future and it's happening right under their nose and they don't realize it. If the devil can make them believe that, Lord, he's got them whipped. Believe what? If the devil can get the church to believe that it's way up there, way out in the future, he says it's got them whipped. It is right under their nose and they don't realize it. Let them realize, Lord, that this Holy Spirit that we are enjoying and have been for all these years is you. Is Christ, the covenant that God made with the human race, that we could be sons and daughters if his spirit dwelt in us. And we would do the same thing. Who was that Elohim down there in Abraham's camp? It was you, Jesus. The anointed one that anointed a body of flesh to show that in the last day you will make yourself manifested in human flesh. And we see you do it every day and night. Amen. This has been, you heard the tape. We see you do it every day and night. When the tape ended, did you hear the prophecy? Anointing falling on somebody, speaking tongues, interpretation and all that. Yes. These are all supposed to be in the body of Christ. Amen. And you have a part in it. Mm -hmm. Don't sit down on the sideline as a spectator. God has something for you to do. Amen. Search for it, fast for it, pray for it, Amen. desire it. Amen. Amen. And then he will let you know what he has chosen you for before uh, the foundation yeah. of the world. Amen. And be satisfied with the position he places you in. Amen. Who was the Elohim? 
the anointed one that anointed the body of flesh to show that in the last day, you will make yourself manifested in human flesh. And we see you do it every day and night. And this has been going on for the first time for 2,000 years. And here we are. We've come through Luther's age, like you took Abraham through Wesley's age, like you did Abraham through the Pentecostal age. It organized itself and denominated and set back on the shelf. Church, moving right on, right on. Little isms trying to come up. But every plant that my father hasn't planted will be rooted up. Amen. It will die right away. Amen. So what it is, I will stop here because I can feel. If you are preaching the message, preaching, you have to feel into the people. Amen. And see the, the, absorp the absorption rate. Like a teacher in the classroom. Amen. Children can take so much. <laughs> if you don't stop, from that time, even what they heard, they, have, they will start forgetting. <laughs> in summary, God's body, God's church, uh -huh. he is constructing it just as the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that body had the fullness of God in Amen. it. And it was given up, died in our place. Now through that death, burial, resurrection, he has redeemed the people now to build into his church. Amen. And by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we become members of this body, this church of the living God, also called God's building, God's house, also called the bright tree. Now, in order for him to be united with us, we have to have all of his divine nature through the operation of the Holy Spirit. In this body of Christ, there has to be healing. In this body of Christ, there have to be all the gifts that were in the body, the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. himself. Amen. And this is God is calling you as an individual to pray until you, f you become part of that body. Amen. And that is the only body that is going up in the rapture. Amen. Not this group or my group or somebody's group, but individuals that have been born into God's family by the operation of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They are part of God's building. They are part of God's body. They are part of God's pride. They are part of him. And just as he is the word, she is also the word. Amen. She knows what to do with the word. We are not now learning things new. Whatever we need to know, God has made them known through his prophet. Study and find your place. If you are called to be a deacon, find out what the, the, the word says a deacon should do. If you are called to be a minister, find out what the word says the qualifications of a minister are and what everything else associated with it. Whatever God, is, God calls you to be a musician. How many know that musician? Be a musician is a calling. People are only interested in the magical gifts. But go and read 1 Corinthians 12, and you're going to find out that in the receiving gifts helps. H E L P S. People that are gifted to give. Without those kind of givers in the congregation, the church will collapse. No one person can do it all. You have a part to play. I have a part. Somebody else has a part to play. And in this body of Christ, we have this God's hand. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Yes. These are God's hand. Amen. 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 And he lifts up his bride using those fivefold ministry. Amen. 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 They will take what the prophet of God brought and feed the church of the living God Amen. until we become the word in fullness of power and everything. Amen. If you are a lazy person, don't bring your laziness into your prayer life. That's right. That's right. Don't bring your laziness into reading and listening to the message of the hour, reading of your Bible. Amen. Don't let the devil make you so busy you don't even have time to pray. And that's what he's trying to do. Make you so busy, you, and yet, when it comes to social media, 
That one, you are not lazy. You can sit down there and be watching TikTok or whatever they call it. Talk, tick or TikTok, whichever it is. You can sit down and watch the latest movie. They have Nollywood, Kumawood, Hollywood, Hellwood, and everything wood. You have time to be listening to this, and people know. When we went yesterday in church, when the music is going, how many of you will be dancing? But you, you, when they, 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 they were playing some kind of Jerusalem or something, come and see how everybody was doing some kind of strange antiques over there. But when it comes to the house of the living God, to see people dancing and praising God like David, how many people get that? Come under that anointing of the Holy Ghost. You want to look around over your shoulder to see if somebody is watching you. Did David care about whether who was looking on? As long as Jehovah was looking on, that's the eye, the one he wanted to please. Amen. Who do you want to please on earth? Right. Shall we stand up? Who do you want to please on earth? There's a song that we sing. Are you in the church triumphant? Amen. Are you in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized into the body. Baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Right.
us people of God, if we can get a revelation that God has made me part of this body, this building, I'm part of him. You have an eternal attribute. You share God's soul, God's own life. And just as God would never be defeated, you can never be defeated. Just as God abides forever, you will abide with him forever. Thanks be to God that Christ on Calvary opened the door for all his predestinated children to come home and be part of himself. He's given himself as food that we might partake of his nature, partake of his blood, his life, and abide forever. Let's bow down our heads. Say, Lord Jesus, you have called me to be part of your bride, part of your body. What do you, will you have me to do? When the revelation hit Saul on Damascus Road. He said, Lord, what will you have me to do? God has something for you to do. The will of God for your life is a mystery. And you must pray to God for the revelation of that mystery, which is to you as an individual. Revelation of God's mystery of his will concerning your life is, is to you as an individual. Lord, what will you have me to do? as you abide in his perfect will he will make all things work together for your good because you are in his will you know the story of how a sister was playing uh, the keyboard and Brabrana was praying for the sick and they were singing the great physician now is near the power of God had filled the room. This sister jumped up and was speaking in tongues and singing in the spirit and all that. The Holy Spirit kept on playing the keyboard, showing that it's not the man behind the keyboard, but the Holy Spirit, the one that is playing the various instruments and doing the various things. They are all under the anointing of God. You might think that their role is not important. That brother playing the, the drums, you think it's, it's Roy, the one sweeping the floor, you think their role is not important. As long as God plays them there and they do it with all their heart to the glory of God, you need to pay the bills of this place. And somebody will give and give and give. Even if they will not eat, they will rather sacrifice for the work of God to go on. You think God will overlook all those sacrifices? No, sir. I'm going to pray that the blessing of God Almighty will come upon His children. And that we'll find our places in the body of Christ. That we'll be sheltered and protected because we are part of the eternal. Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. Thank you for this portion of the body of Christ that you bought with your own blood. Dear Lord, I commit them into your hands. Jesus, the broader picture, I pray that we will see ourselves as part of that body of Christ that has already defeated death, hell, and every demon and sickness. I pray that the name of Jesus Christ will, Lord, be magnified in everybody's life. Lord Jesus, give them the anointing that will help them to do what they are supposed to do in the body of Christ with joy. Lord, that they will not do anything bearing grudges in their hearts. Whatever sacrifices they make for the kingdom of God, they will do it with joy so that the blessing of God will come upon them. For your word says, God loves a cheerful giver. I pray that you put a cheer in their hearts and in their faces when they are doing your will for their lives. May we respect each other's role I not think that I have to be like that other person. No. May we be satisfied with what you have made us. We thank you. We bless your name. Bless all the saints everywhere they be. Protect them from the wicked one. 
We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We adore you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Don't you love him? Don't you love him? Love him for making you part of himself. You want to sing? I love him. foundation of the world.